The term intuitive eating doesn't actually mean eat whatever you want, whenever you want. The version of intuitive eating that's been shown in scientific studies to be really effective for stopping binge eating and causing weight loss is very different from the intuitive eating you may see floating around social media. In fact, if you've tried intuitive eating before, there's a good chance you haven't yet tried the version of it that's actually effective, as shown in scientific studies. So today I'm going over the differences between the scientific version of intuitive eating and the media version of intuitive eating. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I'm a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And last week I shared a video going over studies on how effective intuitive eating is for binge eating, emotional eating, and weight loss. And the feedback I got on that video made me realize that I should spend some time really diving into the differences between what most people think when they hear intuitive eating and what the scientific literature and I are talking about when we say intuitive eating. So I think the definition of intuitive eating that probably comes to most people's minds when they hear that term is eat whatever you want, whenever you want, totally guilt-free. If you feel like a donut when you get home from work, you eat that donut. If you go to a party and you want to eat all the party food the whole time, you do that. No problem. It's all intuitive eating. And if that's what we're defining intuitive eating as, then I can completely understand why people think that intuitive eating must cause weight gain and there's no way intuitive eating could cause weight loss. And the popular redefinition of intuitive eating has in fact completely left out the core point of intuitive eating in the scientific literature, which is appetite awareness. In fact, a lot of intuitive eating studies called it appetite awareness training back in the day. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to be talking about what scientific intuitive eating is, aka the kind that's been shown in studies to be really effective for emotional eating, binge eating, and causing weight loss. And I'm just going to refer to it as intuitive eating from now on. But if I go back to talking about the media version of intuitive eating or the common definition that people hear, I will specifically label it as that. And appetite awareness, aka the core of scientific intuitive eating, is learning how to eat only when physiologically hungry and stop when lightly physiologically satiated. And the issue here is that because of how we've been conditioned throughout our lives, the vast majority of people cannot really tell the difference between psychological hunger and fullness and physiological hunger and fullness. And I think this is where a lot of people get tripped up on the definition of intuitive eating. Because eat what I want when I want does not actually mean when you want. You have to ignore what your brain wants because your brain always wants hyperpalatable food even if you're not actually hungry. So your psychological appetite does a lot of interfering with your ability to assess your actual physiological hunger. So the core of scientific intuitive eating is learning how to differentiate your physiological hunger from your psychological hunger, which is not something that most people know how to do these days. And now I'll list some red flags that suggest that you might not know what your actual physiological hunger feels like, or you might be ignoring it and eating according to a psychological hunger. And just as a note, I did literally every item on this list before I started intuitive eating. Doing these things is the norm because that's just how we've been conditioned to eat. And there's no shame in doing any of these things. They just indicate that you are a normal person and you probably aren't doing intuitive eating right now. So one example is if you always eat the amount of food you serve yourself. So you're always perfect at predicting how much food you're going to need in order to feel lightly satiated. So if you just eat the amount on your plate and you eat all of it and you don't take more the vast majority of the time, that suggests that you're not actually eating according to your physiological hunger cues. And even worse, if you think that restaurant portions always happen to be the right size and you eat all of them and don't need any more after that, then that suggests that you are eating according to psychological hunger. Another example is if you're always hungry at the beginning of your lunch break, or you're always hungry when you get home from work, that can suggest that you are eating by habit rather than whether or not you are actually hungry. Because the time at which you get physiologically hungry should really vary day to day because it depends on what you ate the day before, it depends on your activity level, it depends on how much you slept. Another example is if you get hungry when you go to a party and see food there, or you get hungry after drinking alcohol, or you get hungry when your coworker walks in with a donut, or you get hungry when you walk by a bakery. And all of these are examples of psychological hunger, which can be a result of just wanting food, maybe it helps relieve stress, or maybe it's a habit like lunch break or getting home from work. But that doesn't mean that your body actually needs calories in that moment. It just means you want food and you're saying that you're hungry because you want food, which is the most common way to label that feeling in Western society these days. But unless you are really lucky, the vast majority of people, including me, need to train ourselves pretty extensively in order to learn how to tell the difference between psychological hunger and physiological hunger. 
And it is a big learning process. It took me years to really feel like I could fully understand and gauge when I'm hungry and when I'm satiated. And chances are you're gonna have to deviate from your usual eating routine in order to learn what your hunger feels like. So for example, you might do experiments on yourself, like try skipping lunch and watch the phases of your hunger. So you will probably have an initial really urgent phase of I want food, I need to eat. You're thinking about food, you really want it, it sounds really good. You're hungry in your mind, but your body hasn't yet given any signals that you're actually hungry. And then you'll start to notice actual physiological hunger signals like your stomach growling and you might feel weak or a little bit tired or a little bit shaky or grumpy. The goal is to learn what your hunger feels like, not to frequently get to very hungry because that's not what we want to do with intuitive eating, but the goal is to learn what very hungry feels like just by experiencing it here and there at the beginning. And intuitive eating is not easy. It takes a lot of mental effort and constant awareness and mindfulness to keep track of how you feel when you start eating and stop eating, in addition to learning what your hunger even feels like and how you can label it. So for example, in these studies I shared in the last video, researchers had participants keep a log of how hungry and full they were every time they started eating and ended eating. And this was after an initial phase in which the participants were instructed on how to start to learn their hunger cues, just like I'm doing with you now. So if you tried intuitive eating and it felt easy and natural from the get-go, then chances are you didn't try the scientific version of intuitive eating, which is difficult. So far, I focused on the fact that intuitive eating means eating only according to your internal hunger cues. But this also means not eating in response to external cues. And to make this crystal clear, I'm going to list a bunch of examples of external cues, which would be things that you are not allowed to eat in response to if you're doing intuitive eating, unless you are truly physiologically hungry. For example, if you eat dinner because your spouse or parent says that dinner is ready, or you eat lunch because your friends asked you to go out to lunch or because you're at a restaurant, or you eat a donut because your coworker brought them in, or you eat breakfast because you just woke up and that's when breakfast time is, or you eat when you get home because that's your routine or because you're stressed or because you need some reward and dopamine, or you eat because you walked by a bakery and it smells good, or you eat because you're bored or if you finish the bag of chips because that's how many chips there are in the bag. And these are all examples of things that drive most people's eating behavior. Things like habit and mirroring other people's behavior and tempting smells and trying to deal with negative emotions. All of these are things that you have to do away with if you want to do the scientific effective version of intuitive eating. And instead, you can only eat if you are actually physiologically hungry, which means turning down a lot of eating opportunities and sometimes feeling weird because you're the only one not eating. But as you practice and get used to it, you can develop strategies that let you be able to eat when you want to be able to eat, like when your lunch break starts. You just start to learn about when you need breakfast and about how much you need for breakfast, about how full you need to feel after breakfast in order to get hungry by the lunch time that you want to get hungry at. So you just have to change the focus. It goes from focusing on, I eat because the clock says so, to I try to strategize so that my body naturally starts to ask for food when it's convenient for me because now the clock says so. So intuitive eating does not mean just letting go and eating whatever, whenever. For some of you, it may actually feel stricter than your average diet because you're having to really pay attention to when you are eating and how much you are eating and if that matches up with your physiological cues. However, the strictness is the type of strictness that actually promotes psychological health and mental well-being according to a bunch of studies, whereas strictness from being on a diet or calorie restricting or trying to eat smaller portions have been shown to have detrimental consequences for mental health. And I got this question last time, so I know I'm going to get it again. The main focus of intuitive eating is not what you eat. It is when you eat and what causes you to eat and how much you eat based on your physiological hunger and fullness and actually learning what those feel like. However, if you really want to have intuitive eating be the most effective and the best for your health, then yes, you should absolutely try to pair it with a healthy diet. But that is a topic for another video. If you are curious about how to change what you eat on intuitive eating and how best to incorporate a healthy diet into intuitive eating, I talk about that quite a bit in my older videos on intuitive eating. So I'll link that playlist here. And if you are interested in practical advice on how to actually start intuitive eating, I wrote a guide for that on my blog, which I will link in the description below. So I hope this was helpful and more clear than my last video because I realize I do need to make very clear that the intuitive eating I am talking about is not the same as the intuitive eating you've probably heard about from everyone else. If you like my videos, then please consider supporting me and making them either through the Patreon or the GoFundMe. And over on the Patreon, once we hit 50 patrons, I'm going to get Q&A videos going where I answer your questions that you ask over there in video form. So if you're interested in getting involved in that, check it out. The link is in the description below for both that and the GoFundMe. And if you like this video, please like and share it so that other people can get this information and learn that the intuitive eating that really works for weight loss and 
binge eating and emotional health and all that is not the same as the intuitive eating that gets talked about. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.